I don't I don't get it. I need to I need to fiddle with that some more and I don't really want to right now. I don't have the mentality for it. Um Alright, but at least I can hear me and my computer doing the recording picks it up, so that's fine. <laughs> Okay. Guess we'll get started in just a few seconds. I'm gonna one more thing. Alrighty then, um, I'll bring you down here, then boop. Alrighty then. It feels like a long time. Ah, uh, but I was, ugh, I was metaphorically dying. <laughs> Hello and welcome to yet another instance of some sort of talk show. Yet another one of them talk shows. That's what we should rename this to. Yet another one of them talk shows. <laughs> Just let the title get slightly longer and longer over time. Um, I am your driver, and this is the even. So if you don't know what we're doing here, um, we're running through the D the Dungeon Dragons Monster Manual. Um, not any of the, like, add-on books, just the main sort of body of work. And we're taking it monster by monster in alphabetical order, or at least as close to alphabetical order as we can. And oh, man, we Tyler, you're just going. I can't hear a thing. Can't hear a thing? I don't know if that means other people can, but... Wait, you can't hear me? <laughs> Fun times, guys. Fun times. On Discord? I'm confused. I can see mm -hmm. my I can see my my circle light up. I guess I'm gonna exit and join back in and see if that changes anything. Yeah, maybe. Weird. On. Okay, let's see. Say something. I mean, is it on Discord or is it in stream? That's weird. Okay, well, now I can hear things. I just can't do a pop-out window of it for whatever reason. Oh. Okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but I mean, guys. is it? But I mean, is it still? Is it? But where? Where was the problem? Was it on Discord or on stream? Discord, I think. Discord. Okay. Discord. When I like ah. did a pop out, like I usually pull up a pop out of both of our images so I can watch the stream while it's going. <laughs> and mm. like when I did that, all of a sudden, no audio. Weird. I don't know. There I don't go. know. I don't know what was. I don't know what's different. Um. Yeah. But yes. Um. D and D Monster Manual, Monster by Monster, Alphabetical Order, 
and we try to sort of use what we know in the art mediums that we use and try to do our best to either do our own take on that creature or recreate that creature to the best of our ability and or imagination. So last week we were doing, we kind of dipped our toes into the, into a section of the D's that is probably one of, if not the second longest. So the dragons, um, the third longest might have been the demons because they have a pretty large pool for, to choose from. Um, so we started with the chromatic dragons where I decided to do the black dragon and even decided to do a rendition of the blue dragon. And then we decided that we didn't want to spend um, half a year on dragons alone. So <laughs> we were just going to do um, that representation and then an alternative representation today. Um, mm -hmm. Or at least that's what we thought we were going to do. Don't know yet if we deviated from that idea. <clears throat> so... I think it was on. <laughs> so the um, the major deviations in the monster manual are the Draco Lich and the Shadow Dragon. Um, I opted to do the Draco Lich, which I immediately ended up regretting. And last time we discussed, uh, even was going to try to do some sort of a Shadow Dragon. Um, yeah. Of which I believe I believe you are up first. This time, because I went last time, even though um, I had you go first twice a couple weeks ago. Um, so how was this one? How was this one for you? Like, did it just sort of roll off the pen easily, or was there like a lot of struggle? Kind of, and we'll end up kind of showing it. But I had a lot of difficulty, much like the last one, trying to get the pose right. Um, I did again, and it's debatable in this one because it's like uh, in so much shadow, uh, more of a Chinese style dragon. But that means that there's like only so much real estate that you can do with your design because of how long it is. Um, and so I did a whole bunch of sketches of different body types and shapes. And then there's like the problem with anything that has a muzzle of like, do you draw it more straight on or more profile? Um, and like you can do it three quarters. And so I do something like a three quarters, but it's more or less a profile. Like I'd say this is like a five eighths. Um, but but I did a whole bunch of like little sketches that I didn't uh, that I just did in my sketchbook, and then I I just put it in. Uh, uh, procreate to make it look nice. But then once I had the one that I liked, which is the middle row, um, the, the, the one on the center left is the kind of the design that I went for. Um, I was also debating about like, I liked the one directly below that because we got a lot of cool detail of like the skull factor of the black dragon. But more of what I was trying to depict in this one was the shadow part of the shadow dragon as opposed to its base of being or originally being a black dragon <laughs> so then when we get into like the video it actually goes by pretty pretty quickly because i have so many things thought out and since it's a big like shadowy blur it actually it's really it's gonna go by quick you guys um <laughs> my time well, lapse like not only that brought quick, me to five, five minutes, minutes but <clears throat> well it's funny when i do things uh Procreate's interesting. It records only when you make the stroke, so not the while you're making the stroke. So if you make a stroke uh, and then make it long, and if you, you could spend a half an hour like just doodling on the screen, but if you never pick up your uh, your pen, it only records it as one stro uh, one stroke, which is like a fraction of a second. <laughs> so the actual time lapse video was like a minute and a half, and so I had to go put it into. Uh, premiere and slow it down to five minutes so that you guys can watch it come together a little bit nicer <laughs> so i can talk instead of like speed talk but i liked it but we'll see at the end how sometimes 
when you try to do something unique, um, you find out that um, you're not, <laughs> I guess. And, right, like, well. certain things have already been thought out, and then they just turn into a certain way. And let's dive into that. So here we go! Mm -hmm. That black dragon flare. <laughs> so you guys can see there that at the end, it gets very Maleficent dragon-like. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to start off with, and what they kind of showed with the shadow dragon, is kind of like these uh, the shadow coming off of it, and then their breath attack, and their like breath damage type changes from whatever it used to be, and in the case of a black dragon, it should be acid, and it gets changed to necrotic. So, like a typical to make necrotic purple for whatever reason. So I wanted to make this like purple coming out of its mouth, and to give it a pop of color. And it's fun, I experimented this time a little bit more with different brushes. Um, you can see that I used some like I think it was some smoke brushes and some water effect brushes. And then I went back into it with my standard pencil and started embellishing it and enhancing it to like kind of make it smooth together a little bit better. So for those of you that, I don't know, that are getting into using programs with fancy brushes, they're way cool. They're way cool, but they often feel separate. So it's a good idea to use them as a base about other ways that you can use them you don't always have to use water for water and smoke for smoke like you can change their color and alter them around but it's kind of fun and i think the silhouette was strong enough of this big swooping shadow descending upon like i don't know i originally thought of putting like a little person there but then i decide against it later <laughs> do you have um a library of like custom brushes now or do you still sort of just like mess with the defaults and or just fiddle around and custom make a brush on the fly well many of them came already in the program um but to be honest i didn't like a lot of them um for like a base one i need there's like a couple of there's a couple of ways that i like my calligraphy pen to work and there's a couple of ways that i like my pencil to work and the pencils were just not doing it for me and so i had to play around with that for a long time same with like the calligraphy pen. Um, I had to do some things, but these ones are um, are pretty good. They do what they do. Um, they took they take a while for of experimenting to figure out how they do. And so something that's really weird about the smoke brush and the water brush is that since it's a, a computer program, <laughs> you can do some weird things. So when you overlap the water brush. Every time it overlaps in the same spot, it actually gets lighter and creates like a highlight. Same with the smoke one, um, which is really weird. Uh, but what I did is I overlapped them and they gave it those highlights and you saw it like for a second in the beginning, you'll see it, I think, I'm gonna add some purple on the inside of the dragon's mouth and then I'm gonna put some purple smoke up in the shadows. And they kind of like, you'll see some highlight flares of where it kind of overlaps a little bit more. But, uh, a thing that you can do also in this uh, on a computer that's really nice is you can alpha lock things. So you lock all the pixels that exist on that layer. And then I just recolored it so that they didn't get lighter. I just made all the pixels the same color. Or I did for the black so that it became smoky and inky and black instead of like highlight flares of like inky water. And I did this fun thing of like, because it's like unnatural and a shadow dragon thing, I made it's like I gave it like that Joker kind of thing where like the mouth goes back even further into the body. So like theoretically, this can open past where its natural jaw is. In a nasty way. Give it the uh, what do they call that thing? The gulper eel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nastiness. I... Which I think would be so horrifying because like this thing already has a big enough head and like depending on how old this dragon is um it's pretty large like it could like swallow up some pretty big things <laughs> so if it had a mouth double the size it'd be gross but that here's where i start playing around with color logic and then all of a sudden it was like i was going through and i'm like oh man color theory says yellows and purples match really well and then changing it a little bit to a yellow green 
gave it like that sick vibe, which is again a color theory thing, but it, it's just very much Maleficent. <laughs> oh, it is an actual dragon. I thought for a, for a while I thought shadow dragons were just like a curse, <laughs> like the manifestation. No, of a curse. it's actually. <laughs> I played it like that. I did a, um, I ran a campaign and I had some fun. I did like a, a makeshift shadow dragon. And what I did is I said that the dragons, um, at least in this area, it was like protecting an area uh, and protecting artifact. Like its hordes weren't really like a horde of greed, but more of a horde of like artifacts that should not be touched. But like the current dragon killed the last or dueled the last dragon. And then by, you know, winning, he got to like, take over the place but like the loser still is doing their honorable job of protecting it so he like bound his body and soul to be like runes to the place and so that it functioned as this like shadow dragon curse that would haunt the treasure or the artifacts to protect it even further um just in case the the one dragon that did win like didn't i don't know loses or somebody sneaks by it <laughs> it was kind of fun. But no, shadow dragons are dragons that spend several years connected to in the realm of shadows or negativity. The realm oh, in of the negativity. Yeah, the, in the, in the, they end up in the shadow fell somehow. Yeah, and so they just eventually start getting warped and changed and changed until they're this, they're something else. That's which is really, fun. Yeah, <laughs> lore-wise, that's really interesting, though, that like a human or an elf anything like of that sort of stature goes into the shadow fell and they just sort of they just sort of start to be erased <laughs> they just sort of wither away and just sort of die whereas a dragon goes there and they don't really get weaker necessarily they just kind of get different <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was um, the color combination. So yes, we keep you know you keep bringing up the Maleficent parallel, and that was immediately what I thought when I saw the first thing too. But I did you were quicker than I was on that draw to point it out, <laughs> um, which I guess is healthier that the creator points it out than a viewer points it out. But um, I I. I think that if you were to have used blue or something, I think it would have been a little harder to make that parallel. But because you did use the three main colors of green, purple, and black, um, yes. So to that effect, do you think that if you used a different set of colors, um, do you think that it would be harder to see that or do you think you would still kind of like side eye it and go like mm. <laughs> I, it depends i don't think you would uh in the same way but like on the dragon purple like really on the dragon it's purple and uh and black um green was just i don't know they used a lot of green in the background and stuff but then they also had the dragon spit green fire but really the kind of colors that they decided to choose there is some color theory that's embedded into me even further. So as much as like I like it feels maleficent like and I like it uh, and it's neat. There's other like the the long serpentine neck, the pointy um more I don't know. Yeah, I guess like pointy thin gaunt face is also the way that that dragon looked. And like the horns they, uh, I'm having them swoop forward in kind of this like ram sort of way um, instead of like the Maleficent swooping back, but they still had that similar kind of curve. So I think there's like tons to it that feels the same. But if I did blue or reds and stuff, it would evoke a different element and energy, but I wanted sickly. I wanted alter uh, variations on acid. <laughs> I wanted those vibes, and so I'm okay with it. I think it would have been cool with like the it. with the sky sort of um, like the overhead cloud sort of position that you gave it. I think it would have been cool to 
have included like a town or something beneath it and just have like some maybe like some grays or something to depict like a rain and then just like somehow like show like it like it's like an acid rain so it's like a corrosion below beneath it um but yeah just to go back to the colors um because for for me whenever i do like a dark creature um if it's generally the only colors that i can ever think that are acceptable that to my eyes that can go into that like um into that dark setting are purple blue and purple blue green and to a certain extent gold if it's a more solid like dark setting um like if it was like an like an obelisk or something and it needed to like have some sort of color setting in there then i would probably shove gold in there somewhere but um otherwise i think that if it's like red like reds and stuff i don't know it it never looks that right to me like i would want more like more fire so maybe like like a gray more like a gray setting than like a black setting so yeah and reds and oranges i could do but it gets that fire and smoke feel that i i didn't want to get into there I wanted the I wanted to evoke that sense of the plane of negative energy and shadow fell that there's something wrong and eerie about it. Like I could have done more blues to get it that like somber feel, but I like how this yellow green makes the the violets pop out a little bit more. The other thing too that I but like the more that I look at it, the other thing that my eyes want to pick up too is that um, I don't know if you wanted to go for like the the still sort of like serpentine um, eastern dragon sort of feel. But what my eyes pick up here is that there is an actual like larger body in the like in the more like cloudy area, and the long wisp. Uh, I don't know if there's a way that. I don't have like a mouse that I can really like mouse over, <laughs> but um, like it's it's kind of like in this sort of like diving scenario, but it's it does have like a wing span that kind of comes out from one end, and you just and you don't really see the other wing, but you see the majority of the left hand wing, I guess, that just comes out and kind of swoops into this like off off canvas sort of area. Um, yeah. I think I was still going for more of an Eastern feel, but I like the idea of this being like, you don't know fully. Is yeah. it just the neck? Is it just one big noodle? Is there a bigger body? I don't know. It's shadows, man. Yeah, I mean, that's my, that's my head canon is that it's, it's not, you know, it, it never really manifests as like a, as like a solid thing. It's always just like kind of up in this like cloud nimbus mm -hmm. area. <laughs> And it's funny, I don't know, I would love to see, like in real life, maybe I need to spend some time drawing it, but uh, my my sense of drawing dragon anatomy is a little bit like, meh, I'm not sure. But um, shadow dragons, as well as like a couple, I think shadows in D&D, uh, &D, uh, the creature, um, weaken if they're in direct sunlight. And I love the idea of them looking more like a wet dog or a wet cat, <laughs> like once the light gets turned on them and you do get to see their whole full form. But the rest of the time, it's just like the menacing, I don't know, darkness. <laughs> Could be there. All right, let's change gears a bit. Um, let me put a marker so that I can kind of timestamp things. Um... Let's change let's change gears a bit and let's go into more of a 3D sort of scenario. Um, <clears throat> so as always, I try to condense um, whatever I'm doing into a 15 minute segment. So you kind of you kind of get a feeling for how long something took me depending on how fast all the actions go inside of the inside of the time lapse. Um, for this one, I did try to chunk it out into like small bits over the week. 
So on mm-hmm. Tuesday, I did I did one sort of small bit that only took me about like 20 minutes. And then I tried to do a little bit more on Thursday, but it was almost negligible. And I think I ended up busying myself with some other things. Like I, I had to look up some other recipes and stuff like that. And uh, it just wasn't working out. Then Saturday was the first sort of like crazy day as far as like um, I was telling even earlier before we before we um, activated our audio things that um, like over the night my fan sort of shifted or something. And so all of the like temperature regulating air was just going elsewhere in the room and so I was just slowly heating up more and more and so by the time I did end up actually waking up it was four o'clock in the afternoon and so you know when you get up and you've slept for that long you know your body still sort of is in like a hibernation sort of mode so even then I was still kind of like a hard sort of like uh gotta do stuff um and then the rest of this was in like almost two hour segments. So I did like a two hour just like run of work. And then I had to look up how to do something. <laughs> I had to remember how to do something in Blender real quickly. And so that was like a 20 minute break, which I stopped recording. And then I reactivated the recording. And that was just another like two hour stint of stuff. And I was just like, all right, got to load up the video and render that shit. So. Um, with all the prep is done, this is what that ended up looking like. But it was actually this one. So, another thing. So this was the first day. Um, I didn't actually know if I wanted to adhere to what I what I'd said about the um, skeletal dragon as much, but I already had the asset that I did before for Tiamat, so I was like, "All right, Mm. we'll we'll continue to do that." I had to look around for some references as far as like, and it's, it, I'm actually going to drop that train of thought real quick to go on a tangent. Um, it's weird how close to hard body work and like 3d modeling machinery, um, doing a skeletal structure is because unlike muscle and, you know, scales and stuff, where it's more, you could argue, it's, you know, it's more organic, you know, there's more round shapes to those, and you can kind of, like, cheat areas here and there. Um, bones are very, I would argue, very uniform. <laughs> um, there's little, like, there's little variations here and there, like, there might be a divot, or there might be a, you know, a cut, a fracture, yada, 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 but ultimately... A femur is a femur, and a tibia is a tibia, <laughs> you know? Um, they all have a, have a generic sort of shape, and then there's, like, little variations in them that kind of make it so it's like, oh, that's a cat rib cage. Oh, that's a human rib cage. Mm-hmm. So here, the most the most tedious part of it was just getting the right shape so that it it looked okay to my eye so i was like satisfied with moving on and then doing enough of them which was the other sort of frustrating part that i sort of started to realize about doing skeletal structures is that there's just a lot of bones (laughs) um and it's not just there's no way that i could have like I, I that I could easily conceive of to like do one structure as like a rib cage or something like 
I just had to take a deep breath and just do each rib <laughs> individually. I mean, there's cut and copy methods, which I ended up using, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just time, <laughs> you know, that's why this first day, like, that's why I just kind of dedicated an early day in the week to just being like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get a layout of the bones. And then on the next subsequent days, I'm just gonna put them all together and then maybe like add, you know, slowly add more and more detail to that. But as long as I have my, as long as I have my Legos out on the floor, you know, then I can decide if I want to, how I want to make my spaceship. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also a lot of looking up references, like, and different references. So I had to look up um, how other people modeled um, claws and, like, the forelimbs and the hind limbs. Uh, not just for like shape and structure, but um, in how many vertices those artists used. Because I knew that I wanted to put an armature to this, because mm -hmm. being having everything just straight was super unsatisfying. So I was like, I have to pose. <laughs> like it's 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 almost a requirement that I pose this thing somehow. Um, if I wanted to get a little sassy with it, I could add some keyframes and actually get some motion in there. But um, this section was about three o'clock in the morning. And so I knew that I wasn't going to have the energy to actually or the patience to really like put in keyframes. So I was like, at the very least, I'm posing this idiot. So it's, it was a lot of looking up references as to like, um, like, did someone sculpt this with like a billion different, um, like, um, faces or did they do it like very low poly? Luckily, I've seen a lot so of people do it. Luckily, I've seen a lot of people do it, like low poly, and so I was like, okay, cool. So if they did it, so can I. I could, I could find some way to do it. And I don't know. I, I think it was okay. I don't know how tales end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. i i It's weird when you when you sit down and you try to recreate it for yourself that you realize that you don't pay attention enough to the little details of what you've probably seen a hundred times in the museum. So like, mm -hmm. I don't remember what the bone looks like at the end of a Tyrannosaurus or a saber tooth tail. <laughs> there was a model that I saw um, where I got the toes from, well, not where I got the toes from, but where I got the idea from the toes from. But I also looked back on that same model and I looked at the spine because I know that the spine isn't just a straight up cylinder with some bolt like some with some bulbs at the at the at the ends. So mm -hmm. I was like, let's look back at that and see what it is. And this one guy modeled his Tyrannosaurus spine so that it kind of looked like there was like a normal human spine, but above that it had the um I don't know what those ridges are, but it kind of looked like it was a separate thing. And so I was like, all right, I'll just kind of lean into that, you know, like, let's just make it a, let's just make it a second layer, um, okay. sort of like a, like a defensive plate so that it's harder to kind of like stab down and just like dislocate that spine. Yeah. It should be harder to move too, but yeah, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Bodies are weird. But yeah, like um, vertebrae are really weird. They have that like a they're somewhat a circular design, and at least on humans, and they vary from creature to creature. But then they have like a it is it's kind of like a it has four notches. One of them spread out in like a Y formation, and then in between the the like the ends of the Y, there's a longer one that is your um, like the dorsal ridge on it kind of <laughs> and those like they, they kind of change and i, I want to say that on humans the 
like um uh oh man uh the the like tail of the y or the leg of the y that one's a little bit on the short side and then the arms are secondary um but then that dorsal ridge is like the longest but they're so weird but also like and the like you're doing a whole bunch so this is that this is not like a critique but it's kind of strange i like how um the like the neck um uh, vertebrae are different from like the torso vertebrae which are different from like the like hip vertebrae and how those curve and move and how big they are and how wide they are like it's there's so many things that can just happen with the spine that it's a little bit like yeah well, uh, broad strokes you never really look at it <laughs> yeah i wanted i actually wanted to make the neck longer but when there's not flesh and muscle to kind of fill in that gap it looks really weird when you have this skeletal head and then there's just this like really like this relatively thin spine <laughs> that just kind of trails back to this like more sort of like home base of a rib cage and shoulder area mm -hmm. every time i look over at that asset list it it makes me it i hated it <laughs> <laughs> it's funny and when i think like a of skeletons and how they look and how they're weird i've definitely seen a couple of interesting depictions of like you know like a, what a penguin skeleton looks like compared to the body of a penguin and it's <laughs> like their body is so far down that they have this like really long neck that comes up to a head but you don't think about that because it's all this like fat and blubber and fluff that you see and then i've seen people's depictions of like dragons and like uh dinosaurs and stuff as if they had all the extra flat uh flab and blubber and things <laughs> like things that originally you thought had like really long elegant necks is like nope this could possibly be some kind of like manity looking thing <laughs> yeah my favorite one of those is the t-rex um reimagined and so they just they took the standard t-rex skeleton but instead of having like this very like raptor-esque you know like what we see in jurassic park today it is a very circular shape like chicken looking thing and it's just the most adorable little like feathery creature that you've ever seen and you're just like aww and i hate how that skeleton actually fits in that <laughs> Right. Although I would say the only thing that stops those like sillinesses, which I like, and if you know what, there's a lot of arguments that could be somewhere in between. But since they are so big, it'd be hard to get that much fluff down kind of things happening that it would get round and goofy. <laughs> Except for those ones that do live primarily underwater. Like those ones can be nice and blubbery. Goofy. So this is a quick foreshadowing of the weirdness that's going to happen later. Um, for some reason, I tried to do the same sort of properties that I did with the neck and the tail in the sense that I have one control bone that sort of tries to connect with a, with a base root bone. And so mm -hmm. all I have to do is move that one singular bone and everything else sort of... Um, just works mechanically along with it but for some reason with the arms it didn't want to cooperate with me and so i had to do i had to like figure out what was different by sort of like checking and unchecking boxes and there was a weird situation in which the arm just sort of like i would move my mouse a little bit and then the arm would just sort of like glide up in the general direction of where my mouse was, but it would also kind of drift off in a different direction. So I was like, I don't know what's going on there. And for some reason, the, f the further that I went, it sort of started to, I don't know if it was that or something, but that same sort of problem started to, started to arise much later. Um, because then every time I would try to like reposition the tail or something, the entire, and I, I think you'll see it. I hope you'll see it. Um, the entire, the entire model would like spaz out, 
Oh, it's really quick, but you can kind of see it. Every little, like, micro jitter is the entire model kind of repositioning itself just when I try to reposition one bone, and I don't know why. Um, so I would always have to kind of, like, fiddle with things a little bit until it, like, repositioned back where I where I meant to have it. <laughs> and... I don't know why it took me until this week to figure it out, but I could have totally done this for the um, the Axolotl Black Dragon last week. But I finally figured out like how I can do a dumb little like humanoid placeholder um, by sticking mm. in an Ewok looking thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would look good in the bog of like I don't know, bog witch thing. Robes can exist everywhere. I think people are too. People get cold. <laughs> people are way too like f quick to jump to like the capes and the heavy armors, but reality, you're not gonna wear that in the desert or in a muggy ass swamp. You're gonna put on a, you're gonna put on a nice breathable like robe, something that the mosquitoes can't get through. <laughs> It's like it makes me rem think of like the Chinese like kind of brigadine kind of style armor that's really just like a a large multi quilted bathrobe. <laughs> like it's more faceted than that. There's like spe uh, specific places that have like actual metal bits or um or leather or other like things, the... but like really, if it was just thick enough like fabric that'll block a lot of stuff. Is that kind of like the Guan Yu sort of like depiction of? Like I got, I got yeah, flowy. Kind of like... Um, little bits, not completely, but. So real quickly, what this section here is supposed to be is I've added its um. It's supposed to be like a like a, like it's. Not phylactery. I don't know if any lich would ever keep it that close to itself, but. That blue. Decahedron in there. Um, is supposed to be a little more glowy. And it's also supposed to just spew out this, like, um, I didn't know if I wanted it to be, like, a lighter mist or, like, a darker, like, miasma. But it was going to be some shade, some different shade of blue so that it would give more of just, like, that. For some reason, whenever I look at Blue Dragon, I always go for, like, I, I always default to like oh it's some kind of ice and i always forget that it's actually lightning I, I i still kept the desert sort of thing but i keep forgetting that it's just like no blue is lightning um but i also get it mixed up with world of warcraft's syndragosa so um uh, okay. in any case it's funny the and just like how I use the shadow dragon in a different way. Um, Dracolich is an interesting creature depending on like where you look at the lore and stuff. Because there's some that like the Dracolich could be like human liches where it's the dragon that's seeking out its own immortality. But there's like some stories and stuff where the Dracolich is actually like created by humans and the uh, phylactery is held and controlled by the humans so that they control the dragon and like the dragon really just uh, secretly if it ever can somehow like figure a way to do it without like uh, I don't know in a way to destroy or get their own phylactery so that they have control over themselves yeah it's a neat that that could be a way to do a quest line if you ever wanted to if a player ever wanted to try to play a lich or something you could just be like all right you start with we nerf you by having you have no spells and your phylactery is being held by a dude who's got it in a vice so every time you do something not towards his bidding he kind of crushes it just a little bit <laughs> it'd be a weird like a uh, version of like the uh, warlock and patrons yeah <laughs> yeah um 
But yeah, so the original idea for this image was actually supposed to be, um, it was supposed to have some flames in the eyes, so a lot like what I did with the um, Tiamat avatar sort of thing, but I did all that in Unity, and I guess I could have put this in Unity, but I don't know how to do mist effects yet. Um, mm. But yeah, so the... The gem in the center is supposed to kind of like spew this like this like mist um, and then I was going to try to have it be like a 30% over the top and the others uh, 70 and a 70% just in the bottom so it's just filling the floor with just this like with like this eerie like death mist. Um, and then by mm. the time I got here, I was like, well, if I can't get the mists and the fires in, then I could probably put like a caravan, like a, like a wagon or something underneath. It's like, um, it's like down claw. So it like came out and immediately like, like smashed the, the like supply wagon or something. But then I kind of thought about that and I was like, well, why would they have that type of a wagon in like this kind of a sandy like i would probably like try to do more of like a road or something and i just kept going through the logistics of it all and i was just like you know what i gotta edit the video i gotta render the video i'm just gonna leave it there <laughs> whatever <laughs> here's this here's the sand shark blue dracolich <laughs> that was that's I don't know. I I like the posing, it, and I like how big it feels compared to the the little Ewoks. Yeah, the posing helped like ninety percent. Like like I said, I looked at I looked at what I had, and I was just like, "There's no way I'm leaving it blueprint style. I gotta pose this thing somehow. Otherwise, I'm gonna it's gonna look so dumb." <laughs> um, I wish. That the head was moved over just a little, so it kind of covered up a little bit of that like blue orb. So then I, I had a sense of like placement, because it yeah. feels like it's the it, it it comes forward the most in my mind. Yeah, I thought but, that at the very least, if I couldn't get a preview of the render, I thought that the render itself would um, include whatever the program calculated as like the mist that I was telling it to render. And that was kind of the problem was that every time I try to get a preview of it, Blender would sort of lock up and try to do that calculation. Um, and it just wasn't happening. So I was just like, all right, no more previews. I'm just going to have it render the image and see if it just has that data there. And it didn't. So, and I didn't, and every time I, I, and like I said earlier, every time I tried to move a little bit, so I tried to have the spine in different orientations, um, but every time I would move an element, the entire thing would wig out, and the head was one of those things where it was like, it wouldn't just wig out, like, up and down, it would also wig out side to side, so... Once I had the spine in the correct, so it was one of those things where it's like once I had the spine in the correct position, um, the head might be over this way, and so I just have to kind of like wiggle the spine back and forth until it wigged out back into the position that I had set it in, or something mm -hmm. close to that. So, while yes, I probably could have fixed the head, that was pro that was the best that I could do with the head. <laughs> um, until I figure out what I did wrong with the armature to make it wig out like it did. Um, mm. I think I got too ambitious with the constraints, and one constraint was fighting another constraint, and that's why the whole thing was wigging out. In mm. theory. Mm. I still need to go through and figure that out. Um, despite... <laughs> it's just interesting how, um, especially with the armor plating on the back, A, I really like how that ended up looking in this perspective like it's just more sort of like crazy dorsal fins and the original idea with the, the original ambitious idea for this was to have um these little guys just kind of like t-posing just like gliding around like maybe moving a, a wagon or something and then just in the distance you see um the 
the skeletal like the skeletal fin come up and then dive down and followed by all of its other little dorsal fins and then just have it like claw you know just like explode claw smash and then the rest of it kind of comes up and then it just sort of ends at like the i'm gonna like move one more forward at you which is what you kind of see here um Mm -hmm. but it's interesting how those dorsal plates i I, you know i started with an almost one-to-one of the of the spinal um the spinal segments and i ended up just eliminating until i have what i have here (laughs) so even though i you do more you do more work even even though you end up with less it was good that you did that more work (laughs) sort of Mm -hmm. teaching point did you like this one more than the the other one did you like the other one more than this how are you feeling about this one um this one had a lot more sort of interest like a lot of more introspection for me like it's as far as like like reflection goes while while i was going through the process so on the anatomy level of just like oh man like what does what does that bone structure look like or what the heck does the what the heck does the tip of the tail look like um and then i got to kind of refresh what i knew about um some of the more advanced functions of like um armature and constraints and stuff like that it dawned on me finally how to do a dumb little human placeholder so i don't have to go go around and try to find some you know some other like crazy high detailed model that someone else you know did i can just kind of quickly do something with a cylinder i don't remember what i did it's like it's two oh it's a half a sphere and a cylinder that's what it is um so yeah this one i I like this one because it had a lot more that dawned on me and usually that that instance is what makes me feel really good when i do these kind of things so it's like you know just having that little like like oh Yay! Like I might be struggling because I have to do like thirty more, like thirty-five more rib cages or more rib bones. But just the fact Mm -hmm. that that little ding happened, you know, it kind of gives me that little like satisfaction and that energy to kind of continue on with the next like you know, fifteen rib rib bones to complete the the cage. Um, Mm -hmm. Whereas the other one was just sort of like, I have this concept. Let's see if I can execute the concept. All right, that ended up to be a little more weird. Let's texture it to see if that helps my eyes accept it a little more. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of more proponent of like ang- more egg, like more edgy and angular things mm. appealing to my eyes a lot easier than like a round, soft thing. <laughs> Um, I guess it's a lot like how you would view dinner and dessert, you know, like round soft things are kind of like a dessert, like they're, they're nice to see every once in a while to kind of mix things up, but you wouldn't want an entire day of that. Whereas like angular things are a lot easier to look at for me. So it's like, you know, if you look at a spaceship or you look at, um, a, like a predator or like the bones of a of a creature you know it's like all these there's a lot of angles there and sp- spiny mm. things and it's more it's more it's more substance <laughs> <laughs> i guess so i'd probably i don't know i like curvies and swoopies but not as much round floppy kind of things so yeah I can, Kirby's I and swoopies are good but yeah the the round because like I'm, I'm thinking of the axolotl in, in particular that was a very round shape you know <laughs> so yeah all you right funny, i was thinking when i was uploading this that like uh i could have done a shadow dragon version of your axolotl <laughs> but, <laughs> part of me too, but like when i had that thought i'm like that'd be funny but then also just like uh let's not i don't know i didn't know if it like at the moment it was like i wonder if that would be like one-upping kind of 
uh, of a, <laughs> uh, like a dick move. I'm like, no, 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 I don't, I don't need to do that. Like, I like what I did. I like this is like my usual vocabulary of um, realism, swoopy, like kind of things. But it was like a funny thought as I was like, oh, I could have done that. Well, hmm, what do you know? I wouldn't even know what kind of an environment you would put a shadow loxel <laughs> shadow loxel in. Murky Axel, dark Axel Doe. One of my like my sketches, it was like a, a close up of the skull, and then I wanted the eye to like be looking at you as like a, a side eye thing before it like turns. But as it was like walking through the swamp, as you're kind of like looking through other swamp debris and things, uh, I probably would have done the same. <laughs> but who knows? Axolotl are weird. Cute. Yeah. They are indefinitely weird. Um, so that is uh, pretty much it for the chromatic dragon. So next week we'll dive into the metallic dragons the ones that are just generically in like the good section even though some of them have personality issues that could easily be considered evil <laughs> um i am a big proponent of the silver dragon um we had a brief discussion after the stream last time about how a lot of the a lot of the chromatics are kind of the same, <laughs> at least in yeah. shape. Um, but yeah, we'll think of some different concepts and we'll see what we come up with next week. I'm making a tinfoil dragon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> Just along with the scarecrow dragon and the lion tur the dragon turtle for the lion. <laughs> um, oh, I like <laughs> a little uh, pseudo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little pseudo dragon with a purple knight. Uh, dragonborn and uh, red ruby slippers. Oh uh, yeah, Pseudo. okay. That that's probably a better one. I was gonna say a purple knight <laughs> just to throw in something weird. Even though that's not, that's a different world, isn't it? Whatever. In any case, that is our hour for this week. <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in. And as always, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to check us live on twitch.tv at uh, foxstar. That's F-O-X-S-T-A-R-R -R underscore. The underscore is important. Um, at 2 o'clock p.m., Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week. If you end up trying to make your own creatures, um, feel free to reach out either here if I'm live or on Evan's Instagram and send your images or anything that you feel like you want to share there, and we will try to showcase them at the end of the show and say what we like about them. <laughs> Unless you want us to badmouth it, then we, maybe. Um, so, hope to see you next time. Bye! <laughs>